वेलकम टू मैथ्स टी वी टूडे वी विल बी गोइंग थ्रू मैथमेटिक्स एक्सटेंडेड पेपर फोर कैम्ब्रिज आई जी सी एस सी जीरो फाइव एट जीरो सैम्पल पेपर विच इज स्पेसम पेपर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी दिस विल बी द वर्क सोल्यूशन एब्सोल्यूटली फ्री वी हैव यूटिलाइज कैम्ब्रिज आई जी सी एस सी क्वेश्चन पेपर the questions are not designed by us we are using the question paper just for educational purposes if you want to go through the complete question paper go with the flow of the video but if you want to revise or check some work solutions of a specific question then for your help we are going to give video index so that you can skip to the required question question number 1 a part christian and stephanie share some money in the ratio 3 ratio 2 christian receives 72 dollars part i work out how much stephanie receives so first one is christine so three this one first is for christian and stephanie is uh, the later one so it will be having two so we can write down three divided by 72 is equal to 2 divided by x so we suppose that christian and uh, stephanie will be receiving x amount so we'll make this equation cross multiply after cross multiplication 3x will be equal to 72 multiplied by 2 which will be equal to 144 so x will be equal to 3x is equal to 144 so x will be equal to 144 divided by 3 which will be 48 so 48 dollars stephany will receive second part christian spends 45% of his Seventy-two dollars on a computer game. Forty-five percent of his seventy-two dollars on a computer game. Calculate the price of the computer game. So we have to calculate forty-five percent of seventy-two. Forty-five percent. This will be forty-five percent of seventy-two. We will solve with the help of calculator. So. We will write forty-five percent of seventy-two. This will be thirty-two point four. Thirty-two point four. So answer will be thirty-two point four dollars. Part three. Christian also buy a meal for eight forty. So he spend. Thirty-two, thirty-two point four dollars already. He spent thirty-two point four dollars. Now he is spending eight point four dollars more. So eight point four zero. We can add this much amount on meal. So total will be forty. Point eight zero dollars. So this much amount he spent. Calculate the fraction of of the seventy two Christian has left. Left fraction. We have to calculate the fraction which is left after buying the computer game and the meal. So give your answer in lowest term. So we'll use calculator. Forty point eight zero. Divided by seventy-two. This will be if we divide forty 
0.80 over 72 we will get 17 over 30 so this much amount he spent so leftover will be 1 minus 17 over 30 so if we solve with calculator so this will be equal to 13 over 30 this will be the fraction which will be left so we will write 13 over 13 over 30 part 4 Stephanie buys a book in a sale for 19.20 dollars this sale price is after the a reduction of 20 percent Calculate the original price. This is reverse percentage question. We have to find the original price. Let us suppose original price is X. So if X is original price, then after 20% reduction, it will be 80% of this price because 20% is reduced. So 80% of this price is equal to 19.20 dollars so this will be our algebraic equation we will solve this equation and we will get the original price so we will shift this 18 over 100 to the other side of e equality so x 80 over 100 we will shift to the other side of equality so it will be equal to 19.20 into 100 over 80 so we'll solve this with calculator 19.20 multiplied by 100 over 80 this will be equal to 24 so original price is 24 dollars part b boris invests five fifty dollar at a rate of two per year simple interest so we'll apply simple interest formula calculate the value of investment at the end of 10 years so formula will be p r p r t over 100 over 100 this will be the amount so amount will be equal to p r t over 100 P is 550 dollars so 550 multiplied by R rate is 2% into 100 uh, PRT T will be 10 years divided by 100 we will solve with the calculator or otherwise so this will be 110 dollars this will be the interest he will get this is basically the interest amount uh, he will get after uh, uh, 10 years so 110 dollars we will add this interest amount in the principal amount which is 550 dollars so the amount he will get will be equal to interest plus the principal amount which he has uh, invested so it will be 110 plus 550 so this will be 660 dollars part c marlin invests 550 dollars at a rate of 1.9 percent per year this is the rate and compound interest this is the principal amount which marlin has invested Calculate the value of investment at the end of 10 years. This is the time duration. So we will use the formula principal in amount multiply by 1 plus the time duration 1.9 over 100 into this will be the time duration this is the percentage and time duration is 10 so we will write here 10 so this will be the duration 
we will solve with the calculator and we will get 663.90 so answer we will write here 663.90 part d hence invests $550 at a rate of x percent per year compound interest at the end of 10 years he the value of the investment is 638.30 dollars correct to the nearest cent find the value of x so the formula for uh, for uh, amount in case of compound interest is amount is equal to p principal amount into 1 plus rate which is x percent in, in this case over 100 raised to the power t which is the time duration which is 10 years so we will replace the values amount we is given which is 638.30 dollars is equal to principal amount which is 550 multiply by 1 plus rate which is x percent over 100 and time duration is 10 years so we will write here 10. Now we will make x as subject first we will shift 550 to this side so our equation will be 638.30 divided by 550 will be equal to 1 plus x over 100 raised to the power 10 now this power we have to remove we will take under root with 10 638.30 over 550 550 this will also be under root so is equal to 1 plus x over 100 now we will shift 1 also to other side so x over 100 will be equal to root with 10 638.30 over 550 and this will be minus 1 now 100 we have to shift to the side so x will be equal to this whole thing multiply by 100 so we will write here 10 and this will be 638.30 over 550 minus 1 this whole thing multiply by 100 so we'll solve this one with calculator and we will get answer we will solve this with calculator so this will be root with the 10 and 638.30 So divided by 550 minus 1 and this whole thing will be multiply by 100 so we will multiply the whole thing by 100 so So answer will be 1.5. Question number 2, A part, 200 students estimate the volume V cube of a classroom. The cumulative frequency diagram shows their results. So this graph is given. Questions are 
on the basis of this graph if we go through the questions use the graph to find an estimate of part 1 the median we have to check median f by the help of graph and the graph shows median it's the upper uh, reading is up to 200 so graph is from 0 to 200 uh, if you see this one starting from 0 up to 200 200 is this one so we'll take the 50 percent of this side 50 percent of this side will be 50 percent of 200 will be 100 so we'll check reading from 100 so uh, we will we will see the reading from 100 with the help of the scale we can reach to the graph and 100 is at this point and we can even draw the line and check this one and this is meeting on this side it is meeting at 400 you can check this is meeting at 400 so our median is 400 median we are checking from 100 and with the reference to this graph point we are checking the x-axis which is showing the volume volume is 400 for this point so we'll write the median is uh, 400 so we will write here 400 meter cube is already there so the second part is the interquartile interquartile mean interquartile range mean difference between 25th percentile and 75th percentile first we will check the 25th percentile if we if we calculate 25% of 200 25% of 200 will be 50 this this is 40 and this is 60 in between these two will be 50 over here so we will check 50 will be here we will draw the line from this point and check the reading from the graph So if we draw a line from this graph up to 50 level is reaching to 350 so we'll draw this line this is 25th percentile so we can even write here this is 25 percent so this is 25 percent of this uh, cumulative frequency chart so this side will be 350 now we'll have to check uh, 75 percentile of this cumulative frequency graph 75 percent of 200 75 percent of 200 will be 150 so this is 140 and this is 160 in between these two numbers will be 150 and we can write this one as 75 percentile so if we join if we check the graph level and make a line so we can draw a line yes this one so we can check this level and if we join this one with x-axis and we can join it on x-axis I'll show you x-axis after drawing the line uh, now I have drawn the line I will show you where it is meeting at x-axis so this is over here this is like 400 410 420 so this point is 420 
so 75% which is upper curtail <clears throat> if you see this is upper curtail and this one is lower curtail difference between upper curtail and lower curtail is known as intercurtail so we will be calculating intercurtail which is the difference between 420 and 350 so we can write 420 minus 350 that will be equal to 70 so the same thing we will be showing on the answer sheet which is 11, uh, this one intercurtail which we have uh, calculated 70 now the 60th curtail 60th curtail will be calculating uh, in the same way as we have done earlier 60% 60th curtail will be 60% of this cumulative uh, frequency side so we will uh, calculate 60% of 200 will be 120 and 120 mark is this one so if we check the graph level for 120 it will be over here so we can draw a line from here and it will be 120 level and 120 level if we check it is meeting over here if we draw a line and after drawing the line I'll show you the x-axis where it is meeting the graph now I have drawn the line and now you can check I will show you this one this line this line is meeting a little more than 500 so this is 510 this one is the small box is one five four hundred ten four hundred and plus ten so four hundred ten but this line is a little lesser than four hundred ten so we can take it as four hundred seven or four hundred eight like that so we'll be writing our answer like four hundred seven so it will be sixtieth percentile will be four hundred and seven now the number of students who estimate that the volume is greater than 300 how many students have estimated that the volume is greater than 300 so we'll check greater than 300 from the graph so we need the the students they are giving us more than 300 if we will have to check the volume on x-axis x-axis is this one starting from 0 50 100 150 200 250 and 300 so we'll have to check more than 300 so if we join this line it's intersecting graph over here and we will join this one to the y-axis also and if we join this to the y-axis this will be joining at y-axis over here and this line if you can see this is uh, almost in the middle of this one 20 and 40 so in between 20 and 40 is 3 uh, is 30 so 30 number of students are estimating lower than 300 30 students are estimating less than 300 out of 200 30 are rate are estimating less than two, uh, 300 so it means 170 which is 200 minus 30 are estimating more than 300 so our answer will be uh, 170 students the number of students who estimate 
that the volume is greater than 300 is 170 students. B part, the 200 students also estimate the total area A meter square of the windows in the classroom. The table shows their result. So area and frequency they have given. Area is given in form of ranges. So we'll have to uh, calculate this. Calculate an estimate of the mean. Estimate of the mean. You must show all your working. So we have to show the working. So first of all, we will calculate the midpoints of this range. For example, this will be 20 plus 60. 20 plus 60 divided by 2. So 20 plus 60 divided by 2 will be 40. So midpoint, we can write here mid value mid value will be 40 for this one similarly if we calculate mid value of 60 and 100 we will get 80 similarly we have to add 60 plus 100 divided by 2 we will get 80 similarly mid value for this one 100 plus 150 divided by 2 this will be 125 and mid value of 150 and 250 will be 150 plus 250 divided by 2 this value will be 200 so these are the mid values which we have calculated and written over here and now this is basically this is x mid value we are showing with x this is our x and this frequency we are showing with f small f so now we will calculate sigma fx sigma f f x so sigma f x we are multiplying f with x so we'll write here 32 plus uh, 32 multiply by 40 so 32 multiply 32 multiply by 40 this one in brackets plus we will write Similarly, 64 multiplied by 80 in brackets plus 80 multiplied by 125 in brackets and then 24 multiplied by 200. So this, so this is sigma fx which we have uh, written. Now we'll have to calculate the mean. For mean, we'll have to divide sigma fx by the number of uh, students. So uh, we will write 32 multiply 40. Again, we will be copying the same thing. 64 multiply by 80 and 80 multiply by 125 plus 24 multiplied by 200 so all this one will be divided by number of students which is provided as 200 so we will write 200 we will use calculator to solve and we will get answer for this for calculator we will be calculating this whole fraction we will be writing divided by 200 and answer will be 1 0 6. So 106 meter square will be the answer. Chale. Part 2 complete the histogram to show the information in the table. So they have, they have provided us frequency, density, and area. This is the histogram, and they have uh, drawn this uh, histogram portion from 150 to 250. They have given us and we will be calculating and uh, drawing the rest of the three from the table you can check first we will draw from 100 to 150 range area from 100 to 150 difference between this one which is class width is 100 to 150 is difference is 50 so frequency divided by uh, frequency 
will be divided by 50 so 80 divided by 50 will be 1.6 so histogram height will be 1.6 so 1.6 means will be 1 1 is over here so 1.5 will be over here 1.6 will be this one so we will draw histogram with the help of scale we can draw this one we can draw this now like this and complete the histogram so this will be from 100 to 50 if you check from 60 to 100 this is 50 this one is 60 level mark so 60 to 100 class width will be 40 so 64 is the frequency for this class so 64 divided by 64 divided by 40 will be equal to 1.6 1.6 so this will be again same 1.6 will be till here so we will draw the same height 1.6 then comes 20 to 60 20 is this one and 60 is this this one is 20 mark this one is 60 mark so 20 to 60 frequency is 32 so 32 divided by class width which is 40 so divided by 40 will be 0 0.8 so 0 0.8 this is 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 this one is 0 0.8 so the height of the bar will be up to this one 0 0.8 and we can join this to this one so this will be our height so we can show this and we can we them separately like this one to differentiate between these. We can differentiate them. Part 3. Two students are chosen at random from those students that estimated the area of the windows to be more than 100. So more than 100 will be 80 plus 24 80 students have chosen from 100 to 150 within this range are 80 students and from 150 to 250 are 24 students so the question says find the probability that one of the two students estimates the area to be greater than 150 this is only greater than greater than 150 so first student we will take greater than 150 and the second student and the other student estimates the area to be 150 meter square or less 150 meters square or less but keep in mind that the total students we are considering are more than 100 so this will be 104 if we add these two numbers this is adding up to 
104 students. So first we will have to consider greater than 150. So greater than 150 will be uh, greater than 150 will be 24 students. These are 24 students. So our probability will be 24 divided by 104. This will be probability for uh, first selected as greater than 150. Now the probability for 150 or lesser. Once we have taken this students, no remaining students will not be 104 because one student we have already taken at this stage. No, the remaining students are 103. This point you will have to understand because this one student we have taken for this probability which is this one. Now the remaining students are 103 and the uh, students estimating 150 or lesser will total students will be 103 and the within this range are 80 students so the probability will be 80 over 103 this point you will have to understand why we have taken 104 at first and then why we have taken 103 at the second draw at first draw we will be taking 104 24 out of 104 for second draw because uh, one student is lesser so we are taking 80 over 103 we will be to calculate the probability we will be multiplying these two and we will be multiplying this whole with 2 so our probability will be if we calculate this one with calculator we will get 4 eight, uh, sorry 3 8 3 8 4 0 over 1 0 7 1 2 if we um, if we simplify this fraction we will get 4 8 0 over 1 3 3 9 this will be our final answer question number 3 f of x is equal to 20 over x plus x when x is not equal to 0 complete the table so this is the table of values we will have to calculate the values for 5 and 8 we will replace 5 in the given equation and by the help of calculator we can find the values 20 over x which is 5 20 over 5 plus 5 the value will be 9 similarly when we replace the value of x is equal to 8 so 20 over 8 plus 8 will be 10.5 we can use calculator to find this b part on the grid draw the graph of y is equal to f of x for these two ranges they have provided the graph and we will trace the points provided in the graph so we will be going to the first point which is minus 10 and 12 so minus 10 and 12 will be here if we check minus 10 is x value so this one and minus 12 will be the y value we can go to this point which is minus 10 and 12 so minus 10 and minus 12 will be this value next value is minus 8 and 10.5 so minus 8 and 10 minus 10.5 will be in between 10 and in between 10 and 12 will be 11 so it will be around here so we will mark here 
this will be minus 8 and 10.5 we can circle the points identified okay second point then third point will be minus 5 and minus 9 minus 5 will be in between these two 4 minus 4 and minus 6 this will be the middle point and minus 9 will be in between 8 and 10 so in between 8 and 10 and the point will be over here so this will be the point which is minus 5 and 9 next point is minus 2 and 12 minus 2 is this one and 12 will be minus 12 will be this point minus 2 and 12 so this will be the fourth point fifth point is minus 1.6 and minus 14.1 so minus 1 over here and 1.6 will be like here so from this point to minus 14.1 so we'll go to minus 14.1 from this point minus 14.1 so we got the point which is around here so we'll circle this point so we got five points <coughs> next point is 1.5 which is plus 1 point uh, sorry 1.6 which is 1.6 and 14.1 so both positive values so one will be in the middle so 1.6 will be around here so we'll go to 14.1 which is above over here so up to 14.1 so 14 here so 14.1 we can take this point and circle this one we got 14.1 next is 2 and 12 2 is this one and 12 will be over here so our point will be this one we are circling the second point on positive side then 5 and 9 5 will be in between these two 4 and 6 and 9 will be in between 8 and 5 8 and 5 in between that one will be this point so we have circled this point also <clears throat> the next point is 8 and 10.5 this is 8 and 10.5 so this will be 11 so this will be 10.5 so we can take this point as 10.5 so this will be the point then the last point is 10 and 12 so 10 and 12 okay so this will be 10 and 12 hopefully you understood everything we have taken the points the points which we uh, we have calculated and the provided points in the uh, table we have drawn on graph now we'll have to plot the graph on the grid draw the graph so we have to draw the graph of this one we will be drawing the smooth curve so we will be drawing this side first so we can draw like this and similarly we can draw like this one so it should be a smooth curve and similarly we can draw the lower side of the graph also <coughs> so, smoother curve like this one like this so you can see we have uh, 
drawn the curve mm. you can curve it a little more if you want you can curve this section a little more like this one C part using your graph solve the equation f of x is equal to 11 so we'll check the graph which we have already plotted and y is equal to 11 f of x is y so 11 will be in between 10 and 12 so we will draw a line check the point of intersection between these two so if we check our points of intersection will be this one and this one we can show points of inter intersection so this value x value we can check x value from here so for in this one x value will be 2.4 uh, 2 or you can say 2.46 so x value will be 2.6 and for this point x value will be we can say it is 8.4 7 or 8, 8.8 .8, we can write these two x values as our answer so x is equal to 2.6 and x is equal to 8.8 .8. x is equal to 2.6 2 and 8.8 .8. these will be the two values Or D, K is a prime number, prime number, and F of X is equal to K. Has no solution, has no solutions. This is important. It should, it is a prime number and has no solution. No solution means it's not intersecting the graph. Find the possible values of K. So from the graph we will check, we'll see from the graph what are those positive values where there is uh, there is no uh, line which we can for example y is equal to y is equal to 2 if we draw a line over here y is equal to 2 this will not be intersecting the graph this one if we draw line over here this will not be intersecting graph if we draw graph y y is equal to 3 line y is equal to 3 it will be here and it will also be not intersecting so y is equal to 2 3 these are prime numbers where it is not intersecting the, the graph next prime number is 5 so if we check 5 is also y is equal to 5 is also not intersecting the graph so 5 value will also be included in the answer and if we check next prime number is 7 so 7 is also not uh, intersecting the graph so 7 will be included in our answer next prime number is 11 which is intersecting the graph so we cannot take 11 value so our answer will be 2 3 5 and 7 so we will uh, write the answer as 2 3 5 and 7 and if you want to show the working so you can show like f of x is equal to k and you can take the values y is equal to 2 and you can show no solutions solutions then write down y is equal to 3 which is also no solutions
then y is equal to 5 which is same thing no solutions and the last one you can write y is equal to 7 which is also no solutions because this is two marks so better to insert this detail also in this question part e the gradient of the graph of y is equal to f of x which we have already drawn at the point 2 and 12 is minus 4 so gradient they have provided us as minus 4 at 2 and 12 write on the coordinates of other point on the graph the same graph where the gradient is minus 4 so we'll check from the graph which we have already plotted we'll check the graph see this is the graph and if we see point 2 and 12 2 and 12 will be this point and gradient at this point is minus 4 so gradient will be like this one minus and if we see the other minus gradient will be for the lower graph and that will be over here over here so it will be at this point it will also be trending negative side so we'll say this is the point which is which is 2 and 12 minus 2 and minus 12 will also be having the same gradient as the positive side this one over here this one so our answer will be minus 2 and minus 12 f part 1 the equation f of x is equal to x square can be written as this one show that p is equal to minus 1 and q is equal to minus 20 the given equation is f of x is equal to 20 over x plus x this is the given equation at the start of the question number 3 so in this part f1 they have provided us f of x is equal to x square so we'll replace here f of x is equal to x square so x square is equal to 20 over x plus x now we'll have to eliminate this uh, denominator we will solve this equation we'll multiply everything by x this side by x uh, 20 over x also we will multiply by x plus this x also multiply by x so finally we'll be getting x cube this will be x will be cancelled with x so it will be 20 plus x squared so we can shift everything these two things 20 plus x squared to the other side of equality and finally we will be getting x cube minus x square minus 20 is equal to 0 and if we compare this one with the given equation which is x cube plus p x square plus q is equal to 0 if we compare this so P, this implies p is equal to minus 1 and q is equal to minus 20 which is the required thing now on the grid opposite draw the graph of y is equal to x square for this range which is minus 4 to 4 minus 4 to 4 we have to draw the graph of y is equal to x square so y is equal to x square we have to draw if we take values values we have to take minus 4 to plus 4 this is the range which they have provided us so we can take the values uh, like for example x is equal to 0 for x is equal to 0 y will be 0 so one point will be this one origin we can take this origin if we take 
x is equal to 2 which is minus 2 so square of minus 2 will be 4 so it will be minus 2 and 4 so our point will be this one so we can circle this point the other value we can take like for example uh, 4 minus 4 minus 4 will be 16 so minus 4 and 16 will be this value minus 4 and 16 will be this value which we can trace from here minus 4 and 16 will be this one then we can take the positive value of x which is uh, 2 if we take 2 y value will be 4 so 4 will be here so we can circle this one if we take y value x value as plus 4 so it will be 16 which is plus 16 so it will be over here so it will be u-shaped graph so we can uh, draw this graph like this one so it it should pass through the origin and passing through the origin it will be trending upward like this so this will be our required graph now <clears throat> this is the point of intersection between these two graphs and if we if we check this so now we have plotted this graph if we go to the question again it is saying on the grid opposite draw the graph y is equal to x square so we have drawn this graph we have completed using your graph solve the equation this so using our graph if we see which we have just plotted the point of intersection is this one and for if we check the x value for this x value for this will be like this point so we can say this is 3 point uh, 6 or 3.5 something like that so we can write the value of x as 3.5 part number 4 the diagram shows a sketch of the graph y is equal to x cube minus x square minus 20 p is the point n and 0 write on the value of n we have to provide the value of n we can solve in different methods so easiest way is to solve with the calculator we'll show uh, on the calculator so if we insert this value of a will be 1 which is coefficient of x cube b will be equal to minus 1 which will be coefficient of x square and value of c will be value of c will be 0 because there is no x involved in this equation and value of d will be equal to minus 20 so replacing these values in calculator you will get value of x is equal to 3.1 so we can write answer 3.1 this will be the n value 3.1 so calculator we can use mode 5 and uh, mode 5 which is equation and then we will be using 4 so mode 5 and then 4 and you will be inserting the values and you will get n is equal to 3.1 question number 4 draw the reflection of triangle T in the line x is equal to 0 so x is equal to 0 is y axis basically this is the line which is x is equal to 0 this one so x is 0 at y axis so we'll have to draw the reflection of T in the line x is equal to 0 so what we will do we will use this tracing paper this one for transformation this will be helpful so we will mark the coordinate axis this is our coordinate axis this is our coordinate axis and 
this is the triangle T. We'll draw triangle T. After drawing this triangle T, now we have to reflect it. The reflection of T in the line x is equal to 0. So we will invert this one so we can we can invert this like this one so we are just changing the side of the tracing paper so new position will be in this one so we'll mark the uh, mark the points on the graph paper so our points will be these three points after marking we can draw the triangle by the help of scale now this is the transformed triangle which is a reflection of triangle T in the line x is equal to 0 so we can mark it as T dash so this will be the reflection and then second part draw the rotation of uh, triangle T about minus 2 and minus 1 through 90 degree and it is clockwise so again we will use the tracing paper and this is the triangle which we have already drawn and utilized for our part one now we'll have to draw the rotation of triangle t the same triangle about minus two and minus one if we check our coordinate axis minus two is here and minus one is here so this will be our center of rotation so keeping center of rotation fixed we will be uh, rotating it clockwise these are the coordinate axis so which we have already drawn so i'm just extending extending the coordinate axis now this is our center of rotation which is mentioned in the question minus 2 and minus 1 and 90 degree clockwise so 90 i'm rotating it clockwise Clockwise will be this direction. So this is about to reach to 90 degree, and this one will be 90 degree clockwise. And our new location will be these three points. So we can mark these three points. Now, if we remove this one, so our new location will be this one. Now we can draw the triangle by the help of scale. This will be a rotated triangle. Now this is uh, rotated triangle and if we want to check the coordinates of this rotated triangle this point is uh, minus 3 and 1 so we can write the coordinates minus 3 and 1 and this is minus 6 and 1 so we can write here minus 6 and 1 and third point is having coordinates of minus 6 and minus 1 so I will write here minus 6 minus 1 hopefully you understood everything now the last part B part of the same question is describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle T on to triangle U they have provided us triangle U and triangle T. This is the triangle T and this is transforming to this one. So we can see it is just 
translating from one location to another so uh, if we check this corner this point and this point it is moving one unit right so x axis right will be plus so we will uh, we can if we have to write the matrix swarm it so it will be one unit right and then this point is moving one two three four five six seven eight and nine units up so up will be positive so nine we are taking right as positive left as negative up as positive and down as negative so matrix will be one and nine and we can write answer here as transformation is translation translation by matrix one and nine we can write in brackets question number five a part a rectangle is provided which is not to scale this side is x centimeters the perimeter of the rectangle is 80 centimeter the area of rectangle is a centimeter square show that this x square minus 40 x plus a is equal to 0 this side is x so as it is rectangle so this side will also be x suppose this is length and it is equal to l this side will be also l so by formula we can write a uh, we can write perimeter is equal to um, perimeter is equal to which is given as 80 so perimeter is equal to 2 into uh, length plus uh, width which is x so this will be the formula so we can shift this 2 to other side so it will be 80 by 2 is equal to l plus x so this will be 40 is equal to l plus x and we can find the value of um, l which is uh, we can find value of l which is x uh, 40 minus x 40 minus x now as we found the length 40 minus x so area area will be equal to length into width so area will be equal to width is x so x multiplied by 40 minus x which is the length so 40 minus x if we open the bracket it will be 40 x minus x square hopefully you will be understanding this is a so now we can shift this to this side so it will be x square minus 40 x plus a is equal to 0 which is the required uh, thing to show now we have to uh, solve the second part second part is when a is equal to 300 solve uh, the equation solve the equation x square minus 40 x plus a is equal to 0 the value of a is provided as 300 so we can solve the, uh, this equation so our equation will become x square minus 40 x and plus 300 will be equal to 0 so we can take factors of 40 as um, 30 uh, and 10 so it will be x square minus 10x minus 30x we'll have to factorize so this will be 300 is equal to 0 so we will make pairs of these two after pairing this one so we can we can take common common will be x so if we take x as common so inside will be x minus 10 similarly we can take uh, 
minus 30 as common so inside will be x minus 10 which is equal to 0 now we can combine these two x minus 10 and x minus 30 so this will be equal to 0 so there will be two options one option will be x minus 10 is equal to 0 and the other option will be x minus 30 is equal to 0 if x minus 10 is equal to 0 this implies x is equal to 10 and if x minus 30 is equal to 0 this implies x is equal to 30 so our answer uh, will be x is equal to 30 and 10 this will be 10 this will be 30 now for uh, second uh, third part for third part we'll have to um, use the quadratic formula it is required to use the quadratic formula in part 3 it is mentioned when a is equal to 200 solve the equation the same equation the a value is provided as 200 use the quadratic formula keep in mind we will have to use quadratic formula otherwise we will not be awarded the marks show all your working and give your answer correct to two decimal places so i will write the equation first x square minus 40x and plus a i'm replacing the value of a which is 200 so plus 200 is equal to zero now value of a will be coefficient of x square which is one value of b will be coefficient of x which is equal to minus 40 and value of c will be coefficient of which will be the coefficient will be the constant so constant is 200 so value of c is 200 and you know quadratic formula quadratic formula is x is equal to minus b plus minus root b square minus 4ac which is discriminant over 2a so this is the formula we'll have to replace the values in this formula if we replace values in this formula minus b always replace values in brackets so that you'll be reducing the chances of committing mistakes so I'm putting the values in brackets minus this one and value of b is minus 40 so I have replaced minus 40 then plus minus root b square b is minus 40 again in brackets minus 40 whole square and minus 4 a is 1 and value of c is 200 so after replacing values we will extend this root to the required position and then over to a 2a is 1 so this is the uh, value which you will be inserting in calculator by use of calculator we will find the values of we will get two values of x if we use calculator insert these values and we will get answer 5.86 and the other value we will get 34.14 these will be the two values of x b part a car completes a 200 kilometer journey at an average speed of x kilometer per hour the car completes the return journey of 200 kilometer at an average speed of x plus 10 kilometer per hour show that the difference between the time taken for each of the two journeys is this one so x kilometer distance covered uh, 200 kilometer distance covered with x kilometer per hour so uh, distance uh, distance divided by speed will be equal to time for first journey and for return journey it will be 200 same distance divided by x plus 10 because speed is x plus 10 and the difference will be minus sign so this minus this will be the difference between two times so we'll take lcm 
we can take calcium x into x plus 10 now this x and x will cancel and we will multiply this with this so 200 into x plus 10 minus sign and then x plus 10 will be cancelled with this x into this one so 200 x now we will open the brackets this will be 200 x plus 2000 minus 200 x divided by divided by x multiplied by x or we can keep as it is x into x plus 10 now this minus 200 x will be cancelled with plus 200 x and we will get 2000 divided by x into x plus 10 which is the same as required now for the second part b2 it's saying find the difference Find the difference between the time taken for each of the two journeys when x is equal to 80. Give your answer in minutes and seconds. So difference between two times we have to calculate. So what we will be doing? We will be, for example, this uh, the fur early one is 200 divided by x. First one is 200 divided by x and the second one is 200 divided by x plus 10. So we will replace, uh, this will be subtraction with the difference and we will replace x is equal to 80 as provided in the equation, uh, in the question. So x is equal to 80. So we will um, write uh, 8200 over 80 minus 200 over 80 plus 10 so we'll use calculator to find uh, to calculate this uh, value and this one if we use calculator it will be 200 divided by 80 minus uh, 200 divided by 80 plus 10 and if we solve this we will get 5 we will get 5 over 5, five over 18 5 over 18 and in decimal value it will be 0 0.277 recurring so if we press the button for time it will be 16 minutes 0 hours 16 minutes and 40 seconds so we can write 16 minutes and 40 seconds as our answer question number six drawing is given which is not to scale opqr is a rectangle opqr is a rectangle and o is the origin m is the midpoint of rq m is midpoint of rq so it's equally divided into two portions PT, PT ratio TQ is equal to 2 ratio 1. So this is 2 and this is 1. So 2 ratio 1. So OP is equal to OP is equal to P and OR is equal to R. So these are the position vectors for OP and R. Then find a part find in terms of p and or r it in its simplest form mq so mq we have to find this side is p 
this is a rectangle as mentioned so this side will also be p p is divided into two equal portions so this will be p by 2 and this will also be p by 2 so we can write half p for this uh, first part we can write half p 1 by 2 p this will be our answer for second part we have to find m t so if we check the drawing m t m is this one t is this one so this side is equal to this side which is r so it is divided into three portions so 2 by 3 because total is 3 so 2 by 3 and 1 by 3 of r so this is 2 by 3 r p t is 2 by 3 r and t q is 1 by 3 r keep in mind the direction is upward so in vectors we'll have to take care of direction and this is uh, half p and its direction is this side so i'm putting arrows for your clarification <clears throat> now we have to find m t to check m t m t will be having this direction so m t will be this which is half p plus this direction we have to change so minus 1 by 3 so it will be half p minus 1 by 3 why minus 1 by 3 because we are changing the direction so we will write answer as um, we will write answer as half p half p minus 1 by 3 r so this will be our second part third part we have to find ot to find ot we have to again go to the drawing o is this one and t is this one so we need this direction o to t o t will be we can take this root o p and t o p is p so p plus 2 by 3 r so p plus 2 by 3 r will be our answer for o t now we can write the answer for OT OT will be P plus <coughs> P plus 2 by 3 R now we got this one now for B part uh, R, Q and OT are extended to meet R, Q and O, T are extended to meet at U. Find the position vector of U in terms of P and R. So we will have to extend R, Q and U, T. So now I will be extending R, Q and U, T. If we will extend R, Q and U, T. So it will be... We can extend with the help of scale. So if I'll extend this, for example, uh, I will extend this line first. So I will extend with the dotted line. So this side. And similarly, we can extend this side also. So if I will extend this line, so this will be the extended portion of the drawing and this is U, this is labeled as U. So if you see this triangle, this triangle <coughs> is congruent to this triangle. So this is P by 2, this will also be P by 2, so half P and we have to find the position vector of OU. Basically, position vector of u will be o u. So, if we extend this line also to find the position vector, what we have to do? We have to extend this line and join this with u. So, 
now this is p and this one is half p which is equal to this one this is also half p which is p by 2 so p plus half p and this side is equal to r this side we will write as r so position vector of u will be p plus half p which is 3 by 2 p plus r or we can write r plus 3 by 2 p so we will write our answer as r plus 3 by 2 p r plus 3 by 2 p this will be our answer so we can mention the same on the position provided r plus 3 by 2 p also so after solving this question we have the c part also of the same question which is mt is equal to 2k minus k and mt mod is equal to 180 degree so what we can do if we can find the mod for this given matrix so 2k square this one x value square plus minus k which is y value square under root will be equal to 180 under root which is provided so root will be cancelled on both sides so this will be 4k squared this will be square of this one will be k square is equal to 180 now this is 4k square plus k square will be 5k square is equal to 180 k square is equal to 180 divided by 5 which will be equal to 36 and value of k if we check take under root of 36 will be plus minus 6 so we are taking only plus value so it will be 6 so our answer for k value is 6 Question number 7, f of x is given, g of x and h of x is also given. Solve the equation f of x is equal to g of 1. So we will find g of 1 first. So we will replace 1 in this g of x is equal to x square plus 4. We will find g of 1 which is equal to 1 square plus 4 which is equal to 5. So g of 1 is equal to 5, we will replace here f of x is equal to 5. So f of x which is equal to 2x plus 1 is equal to 5. So now we will solve this equation. So we will solve this equation over here. 2x plus 1 is equal to 5. We will shift 1 to other side. So 2x uh, is equal to 5 minus 1 which is 4. So 2x is equal to 4 means x is equal to 2. So our answer will be 2. Next part is find f inverse of x. f inverse of x. f inverse of x we have to find. So f of x is given. So we will use f of x. Our equation is f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 so we can write y is equal to 2x plus 1 now we have to make x as subject so we can write y minus 1 is equal to 2x and we can write x is equal to y minus 1 over 2 now we'll have to uh, shuffle x and y so when after shuffling we will get y is equal to x minus 1 over 2 so this will be our answer for f inverse of x which is x minus 1 over 2 so we got uh, answer for the b part also now we are heading towards 
C part find g of f of x g of f of x so first we will check of f, f of x or f of x is what f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 and uh, 2x plus 1 now we have to find g of f of x g of f of x so we'll replace 2x plus 1 in g of x and our g of x is we know g of x is equal to x square plus 4 so in this one we will replace x is equal to 2x plus 1 so 2x plus 1 square because we are replacing this x is equal to 2x plus 1 so 2x plus 1 square plus 4 now we can open the square so we, if we open the square this will be 4x square plus 4x plus 1 and plus this 4 so this will be 4x square plus 4x plus 5 so this will be our fin final answer g of f of x which is equal to 4x square plus 4x plus 5 this is our c part now we can solve d part solve the equation f inverse of f inverse of x is equal to minus 5 so f inverse uh, sorry h inverse of x is equal to 0 0.5 so we can uh, we have equation h of x is equal to uh, 2 raised to the power x and what we can do we can use this equation we can shift h inverse to other side so x will be equal to h of 0 0.5 because we have shifted this h to the other side so raised to the power minus 1 will be gone so x will be equal to h of 0 0.5 now we can find h of 0 0.5 by using this one so h of 0 0.5 will be equal to 2 raised to the power 0 0.5 which we can write as 2 under root or 1.44 so I am writing 2 under root over here now the e part of question number 7 which is uh, 1 over h of x is equal to 2 raised per k of h so write down the value of k value of k we have to write so 1 over h of x h of x we know h of x is given h of x is equal to 2 raised to the power x so we replace this value in this given equation 1 over 2 raised to the power x is equal to 2 raised to the power kx now we can uh, shift this denominator to numerator so it will be 2 raised to the power minus x is equal to 2 raised to the power kx if we compare the coefficients we can see k is equal to minus 1 so this implies k is equal to minus 1 so our answer will be k is equal to minus 1 question number 8 the grid shows the graph of y is equal to cos x for this range 0 to 360 so this is the graph provided solve the equation 3 cos x is equal to 1 for this range give your answer correct to one decimal place so <clears throat> we can write 3 cos x is equal to 1 which means x is uh, cos x is equal to 1 by 3 and we can write x is equal to cos inverse 1 over 3 if we check with calculator cos inverse of 1 by 3 so inverse cos of 1 over 3 we will get 
inverse cos of 1 over 3 this will be 70.5 this will be 70.5 so <clears throat> if we check 70.5 will be like over here 70.5 now one answer is 75 70.5 which we can write over here also 70.5 we have to find the other answer also so we can see at this level graph is passing through this level again over here but we need to find this height this position also so this is 70.5 if we add if we uh, subtract 70.5 from 90 we will get 19.5 or 19.5 so 19.5 is distance from this point to this point so for from this point to this point will also be 19.5 so we will add this 19.5 in 270 so we will get this position so this position will be 270 270 plus 19.5 and we can write 270 plus 19.5 which is 289.5 289.5 so our answer will be 289.5 now for second part b part on the same grid sketch the graph of y is equal to sin x for the same range for the same plot provided we have to um, draw the graph of y is equal to sin x sin x we know for uh, uh, for the value for 0 degree sin is 0 for 90 degree sine is 1 value of sine if we check from calculator it will be 1 so we will get this position 0 0 for uh, sine 0 for 0 and sine uh, value will be 1 for 90 for 180 its value will be 0 again and for 270 it will be minus 1 and for 360 it will be 0 again so our sin x graph will be passing through these points so for sin x graph which is required y is equal to sin x if we plot that graph we'll have to pass through these points so we'll be drawing it freehand curve drawing so it will be passing through these points and it will be going to 360 so this will be the sin x this will be y we can mention y is equal to sin x which is 0 to 360 so this is the graph which is required question number nine the diagram is provided the diagram shows a trapezium a b c d a b c d a b is parallel to a b is parallel to d c a b is equal to 55 meters b d is equal to 70 meter and angle a b d a b d is 40 degree and angle b c d B, C, D is provided as 32. So these angles are provided and two lengths are also provided. Calculate A, D. We have to calculate A, D. This is our required length. So these two sides of this shaded triangle, this one is the triangle which I am shading. 
for this triangle these two sides are given plus included angle is given which is the condition for cosine rule so we'll be using cosine rule to find the length of this one of this side so we can write this side square 55 square plus this side square which is 70 square minus 2 into 55 into 70 cos of the included angle which is 40 so cos of 40 degree so now we will replace this uh, in our calculator and we will get the value which is 45 so this will be resulting to 45 so our uh, this side is 45 meters so we write 45 meter in the space provided we can uh, write the answer as 45 so we'll write 45 over here then for part b we'll have to calculate bc if we see bc is this side so we'll have to calculate this side for for this one we have to understand see this one a b is parallel to dc so a line intersecting this is db which is line intersecting these two parallel lines hence this angle will be equal to this angle so if this is 40 this will also be 40 degrees now we have two angles and one side so we can use sine rule in this case and we have we need this length uh, this length so this side we will be using and which is bc bc over 40 will be equal to 70 over 32 so i will write down in the space provided as bc bc over sine of 40 degree will be equal to uh, 70 which is uh, db 70 over sine of 32 so this implies BC will be equal to 70 multiplied by sine 40 over sine 32 degrees. If we replace these values in our calculator, we will get 84.9. So our answer will be 84.9. This will be in meters. So we can write down the answer as 84.9 meter is already written. Part C, calculate the area of A, B, C, D. If you check the drawing provided, this was the provided drawing A, B, C, D. So we can split this drawing into two triangles one is the shaded one the other one is unshaded one for shaded one we will apply sine formula for area of a triangle and this will be these two lengths and sine of this included angle and then we will apply sine rule for the unshaded triangle one by one so i will keep triangle over here so I will write down for the shaded triangle so it will be uh, 1 by 2 and multiply by 55 which is one side and the other side is 70 and multiply by sine included angle is 40 so sine 40 plus area of the other triangle which is dbc so sides are uh, we will write 1 by 2 into first side one side which is 70 multiply by the other side which we have calculated 84.9 and it will be multiplied by sine of included angle and sine of included angle we can calculate the sine of included angle 
this is 40 this one is 32 which is 72 so this included angle will be 108 so we'll take sine of 108 here so this will be 108 degrees so this is how you can see this is area of this shaded triangle and this is area of this unshaded triangle and we have added these two areas to find the area of this trapezium so now we will use calculator to find the value of this one so if you use calculator you will get the value uh, which is uh, 40 point if, if we insert all these values so area will be equal to will be equal to 4063.26 and we can uh, round it to 4063 meter square this will be our answer part d calculate the shortest distance from a to bd Again, we'll refer to the diagram provided A to BD. A is this one and BD is this one. So, shortest distance. So, if we draw, shortest distance will be the perpendicular on this line BD. So, this will be the shortest distance. No, this is our right angle triangle and we have to find this for example if we take this point as uh, for example F so AF length we have to find the shortest distance and in this triangle we, we are provided with this angle which is 40 degree so this is our perpendicular and this is hypotenuse perpendicular over hypotenuse will be sine of 40 degree so I will use sine of 40 degree so this one in triangle AFB we will take sine perpendicular over hypotenuse which is sine of 40 degree so I will write down sine of sine of 40 degree will be equal to uh, shortest distance which is AF which is required over 55 so distance AF will be equal to uh, sin, uh, 55 sine 40 degree 55 sine 50 degree will be 35 point if we check with the calculator we'll get 35.35 or we can write 35.4 so our answer will be 35 point four meters because lengths are in meters meter is already mentioned so no need to mention this meter it's already mentioned so i will write 35.4 we can mention here meters question number 10 a part show that the volume of a metal sphere of radius 15 centimeter is this one correct to four significant figures the volume v of the sphere with radius r is formula is provided for the volume we'll have to just replace the values in this formula so v will be equal to 4 over 3 pi r is provided r is 15 centimeters so 15 q if we calculate our answer will be 1 4 one four zero centimeter cube this is done now B part B1 the sphere is placed inside an empty cylinder uh, cylinder cylindrical tank of radius 25 centimeter and height is 60 centimeter the tank is filled with water now this is the tank 25 centimeter radius a 60 centimeter height calculate the volume of water needed to fill the tank so sphere will not be allowing water 
to occupy space so we'll have to find the volume of this cylinder with radius 25 height 60 and we'll have to subtract the volume of sphere which we calculated earlier 14140 so the volume of uh, cylinder uh, will be pi r square into h so volume will be equal to um, pi r square pi into 25 um, square pi into 25 square which is radius square into h which is 60 and from this one we'll have to subtract minus 14140 which is the volume of the cylinder which we have already calculated calculated so if we use the calculator our answer will be one zero four triple zero one zero four triple zero centimeter cube so we will write the answer at the specific place so this will be answer will be one zero four triple zero centimeter cube part two the sphere is removed from the tank now this is removed sphere is removed this is the only water in the tank calculate the depth d of water in the tank so depth we have to calculate for calculating depth we will be using the formula basically uh, we'll have to subtract from this volume this is the volume of water with sphere so uh, this is volume of water without sphere so volume of water without sphere uh, if we find the volume of this one pi uh, r square pi r square will be the uh, r is 25 so pi into 25 square uh, into d multiply by d should be equal to 104000 so we can calculate the value of d which will be 104000 divided by pi into 25 square so this will be equal to for 52.75 52.75 which we can round and this is centimeters so we can round it to 52.8 three significant figures Part C, the diagram below shows a solid circular cone and a solid sphere. Both are solid. So, the cone has radius 5 cm. This is the radius. And height is 12x. 5x radius and 12x height. And keep in mind this height is perpendicular height. The sphere has radius r. This is the radius r. The cone has the same total surface area. Total surface area as the sphere. Show that this is equal to this. And total surface area, you, you should keep in mind total surface area is curved surface area plus the base also. So because this is solid, so curved surface area plus the base area will be the total surface area of this solid cone. Now we will find first for example this one uh, we call solid sphere solid sphere will be pi r square it's uh, uh, this one yeah so formulas are provided the curved surface area of a cone with radius r and slant height keep in mind this is slant height L is 
a into pi or l this one we will use for curved surface area of cone and this will be the surface area of the sphere this will be the formula so area will be pi r square for this sphere 4 pi 4 pi r square is for the sphere and total surface area of this cone we will calculate which is pi r square which is base pi into r square which is 5x square plus we need to find the curved surface area of this one to find the curved surface area uh, we need to find the slanting height and for slanting height we have to check this one so if we draw this triangle like this one so this height is 12 and this height is 5 so we have to find this um, hypotenuse we'll apply the Pythagoras theorem because this is right angle triangle so this will be 12 square we can solve here 12 square plus 5 12 x basically this is 12 x square plus 5 x square this square will be for whole under root by Pythagoras theorem these two sides square will be equal to this side so this will be um, curved surface area of this one uh, so this will be 12 plus 5, uh, 12 basically if we uh, write this one 12 square will be 144 144 x square plus 25 x square root so this will be 169 x square under root which will be equal to 13 x so 13 x will be this slanting height so we will we'll have to include uh, we'll have to use slanting height l this is our l so we can find this l we can write here l so area uh, will be this base which is pi r square plus uh, pi r l pi into r which is 5x so 5x uh, multiply by 13x 13x so now we can write 4 pi r square is equal to this will be 25 pi x square plus this will be 65 pi x square so this will be 4 pi r square 4 pi r square we can write here 4 pi r square is equal to we can add this one to 90 25 plus 65 will be 90 pi x square so pi can be cancelled from both sides so x square um, we can we can find r square basically we have to find r square so r square will be equal to 90 x square over 4 which is equal to r square so we can cancel this to 2 4 and 45 so r square will be equal to r square will be equal to uh, 45 over 2 x square this will be our final answer Question number 11, a curve has equation, this is the equation provided, find the coordinates of the two turning points. Basically, it's a, a little complicated question, but the method which I'll explain, that will be the easiest one. So, you can follow this method. So, this will be the formula which you will be keeping in mind it's uh, almost similar to the quadratic formula which you must be familiar with x is equal to minus b 
प्लस माइनस बी स्क्र बी स्क्र माइनस थ्री ए सी दिस इज थ्री ए सी नॉट फोर ए सी क्वाडेटिक फॉर्मूला इज हैविंग दिस वन इज फोर एंड बिलो ऑल्सो इट इज थ्री ए नॉट टू ए दीज आर द टू डिफरेंसेस इन दिस फॉर्मूला एज कंपेयर टू द क्वाडेटिक फॉर्मूला क्वाडेटिक फॉर्मूला इज हैविंग फोर हेयर एंड टू हेयर सो इन दिस केस यू विल बी हैविंग बोथ थ्री and in this equation uh, value of a will be coefficient of x cube which is 1 value of b will be coefficient of x square which is minus 6 and value of c will be coefficient of x which is in this case 0 so we will take value of c as 0 we will replace these values in this equation and we will get minus b b means minus 6 and plus minus b square b square will be minus 6 square minus 3 a is 1 and c is 0 so this portion will be 0 okay so and this will be 3 into a if we solve this one we will get 0 and 4 we will get two values one for plus and the other one for minus so these two values we will get and it means x value or 0 and 4 now we can replace these values in this one if we replace 0 this will be 0 this will be 0 so y will be equal to plus 16 so in case of 0 it will be 16 if we replace 4 in this equation so we will get minus 16 okay i will replace for you y is equal to x cube minus 6x square plus 16 so if we replace 4 cube minus 6 into 4 square plus 16 and you will get minus 16 this minus 16 value we can write over here part b determine whether each of the turning points is a maximum or a minimum so we have already uh, calculated the two points but we have to decide whether uh, which one is maximum uh, turning point and which uh, which one is minimum turning point so for this one i'll draw a rough drawing for this explanation if we draw a coordinate axis like for example this one this is like a i'll draw for your explanation this will be the coordinate axis this will be origin and 0 and 16 will be over here say this is 16 so this is 0 and 16 point and 4 and minus 16 4 is say for example over here so 4 and minus 16 will be point over here so we can write here 4 and minus 16 so we got this point and this point and we have to uh, we have to show that which one is maximum and which one is minimum point so this is the coordinate axis this is x axis and this one is y axis so from here we can clearly see that this is 0 and 16 which is the upper point and this is the lower point which is uh, this is maxima and this one is minima local like uh, maxima and minima so we can confirm this by taking adjacent values for example value of uh, x is 0 over here if we check if we take next value for example minus 1 and replace in the given equation which is y is equal to y is equal to x cube minus 6x square plus 16 if we replace 0 in this 
we'll, we'll be getting 16. But if we replace x is equal to minus 1, so minus 1 cube minus 6 into minus 1 square plus 16, and we will get 9. So y will be equal to 9, and the value, so our point will be minus 1 and 9. So if we take minus 1 over here, so minus 1, 9 will be lower point. You can see this will be lower point. So our curve will be like this one. It will. This is proving that it is turning point. If we take next value, like for example 1, if we take this is minus 1 and this is 1. So if we replace 1, x is equal to 1, y will be equal to um, 11 so 11 mean it will also be lower than 16 so this side is also turning down so this is showing that this is maxima and if we check this point this is x value is 4 if we take the previous uh, value which is 3 so we can check for 3 if we take x is equal to 3 y will be equal to x is equal to 3 y will be giving us the value as a minus 11 minus 11 is clearly above this so like for example over here so it will be turning like this so if we take another uh, value this one like for example 5 if this is 5 this one is 4 so if we take 5 x is equal to 5 y will be equal to minus 9 so minus 9 is also clearly above than minus 16 so this is also turning like this so we can join these two lines and we can complete the curve so this will be minimum value you can write here minimum and you can write here maximum thanks for watching maths tv see you next time with a new question paper with complete work solutions <laughs>